So Threadripper 3000 reviews are right around the corner. I'm not exactly sure when this video will come out, but it should release right before we have the embargo lifted. And, well, many of you probably don't need to see any reviews. There are leaked benchmarks of how it will perform, and we can pretty safely assume, you know, single-threaded performance will be a little lower than the 3950X because it has, you know, slightly lower boost clocks, and uh, the overall multi-core score will be substantially higher. I feel like there are some... Hmm opinions out there that I want to address and some thoughts I want to throw into the zeitgeist before we look at these reviews. Uh, it really stems around two things that I'm not sure I agree with, or at least I don't quite understand. First of all, a lot of people seem to be mad at the prices, or at least disappointed, the price of Threadripper 3000. And furthermore, there are a lot of people that seem to not get what the 3950X is. Who is this processor for. So that's really what I want to address. Who is the 3950X for? And therefore, who is Threadripper 3000 for? And I do think it's actually easiest to start with Threadripper 3000 before we get to the 3950X. And to really explain what I believe the new positioning of, I guess, CPU segmentation is and why it might make sense, is to divide creators into three categories. And the first category to talk about is what I call serious professionals. AMD would say these are the people that do intense content creation. Uh, of course, I think this is a stupid way to put it. I think they should have put serious content creation because that better captures what someone who needs as many threads they can get is actually looking for. These are the people doing outsource render and editing work for legitimate Hollywood movies. Maybe not always the top tier Marvel movies that have their own render farms. People working on indie movies. Indie movies can go up to $1 million budgets now. They might come to you and say, hey, we have a horror movie, uh, an indie horror movie, and we have saved up a CGI budget, and we only have a hundred grand but we make the monster kind of hidden the entire movie. And so we have one minute where we want to show it, though. You have to. It's like Chekhov's gun. If the gun is shown in the beginning of the movie and put away, it has to pop up or people aren't satisfied. So it needs to look really good for that minute. Here's a hundred grand to, you know, someone who can maybe who has a proven track record doing this for lower budget movies or for a team of like 10 or 20 people, maybe 20 people. That's not uncommon. These are serious professionals. They're not just creators. These are people where if a processor is 10% faster, that means they can render 10 scenes that week instead of nine. They will pay every penny. AMD could not keep the 2990 WX32 core in stock because those houses were buying those suckers up over and over and over to run blender threadripper 3000 is decidedly for this market this is who it's for people who have an a lot of money but not their own mega render farms and will pay up as much as they can for the few rigs that they uh, know they can afford. And that brings us to the next tier below serious professionals. These are what I would call semi-professionals. We used to call almost everyone who bought HEDT products a semi-professional in the past. But if you ask me, with how powerful some of these HEDT chips are getting and at their price level that's below you know five to ten grand i think it's time to divide these groups up some semi-professionals will for sure buy threadripper 3000 these are people where often again every 10 percent is worth every penny but maybe they're not doing this 24 7 as their only day job or maybe they're not doing it as amd would say as intensely as the people who want you know, a $2,000 32 core might be. These are the people that have the money. They'll pay $10,000 for a rig sometimes. But most of the people in the semi-professional market, like I would say I'm maybe at the very bottom of this, care about price performance. 
I care about price performance. And well, concurrency, how many things I can do at once matters because this is basically my only rig that I really use for gaming and editing. And well, I don't have that much spare time outside of my, you know, regular job to do this stuff, so downtime is a problem. I have some room to budget uh, my time for when I do this or do that. I can let it render a little longer while I go and go into a meeting while it's working in the background. I have room for this. It's not always 24-7, and it's not literally, it's not literally translatable that every 10% more performance I get will give me 10% more money. That's certainly not true. And yet, I was kind of waiting for Threadripper prices on bated breath, uh, like a lot of other semi-professionals, because I was hoping to be $1,000 or less for some entry level to that immense amount of I.O., the quad-channel memory... But that's because we've gotten used to what Threadripper used to be, not what it's about to become. The thing is, Threadripper's price performance for the 1000 and 2000 series was so good that it was, in my opinion, kind of a happy coincidence that it both made sense for semi-professionals and casual creators with deep pockets to buy the same products you had real professionals buying. So you had people who were always considering 700 to to $1,000 processors, you know, people who bought the six core, you know, i7-990X, you know, Gulf Town processor. Those people were like, yeah, 16 cores. If I can make use of 12 cores 10 years ago, I'll make use of 16 cores now. And it's a thousand bucks. How awesome. And then you just had other people going, well, I'm not buying Epic, but I'm a professional. Thousand dollars? Sounds good. Glad it's cheap. But things did change when Zen Plus came out and you had a 32 core that already was like not really meant for gaming and really just for people that actually do care. Time is money. And AMD charged up for it. They charged $1,800. But then, on the same platform, you could get a 16-core for 900 and so semi-professionals rejoiced. But AMD's not a newcomer anymore in the HEDT. They're not dormant. They've been dominating for years, and now they're moving up the performance more instead of the price lower because that's who this was always really meant for. They just couldn't get away with charging more before and, well, I mean, the previous ones cost less to make, too, let's be honest as well. A full 64-core Epic chip is like the equivalent of 1,000 millimeter squared die. I mean, it's just bigger, too. It's bigger, it's more, and it's for people who need more, not want. It's not really meant for all semi and serious professionals anymore. And this brings me to the bottom of the creator list, what I will call casual or part-time creators. And I don't mean that as an insult, but they are casual creators. These are often YouTubers, you know, without tens of thousands of viewers, maybe people who do CGI for really low budget indie movies that just need a little bit of CGI here and there and they're really efficient at doing that, but they don't rely on it for all of their income. Or, I mean, if they do, they don't want to work 24-7. They just kind of do, maybe they're a, re a retired CGI artist that just likes doing a few things for fun to stay sharp over the weekends, you know. Those type of people, casual creators, that's who used to dream of getting a Threadripper because the entry level was so cheap. But now you're being forced to decide. Do you actually need all of this I.O.? And is every 10% rendering power worth it to you? If the answer is even kind of no, then AMD has an answer for you. It's called the 3950X. This is the processor that fills the gap in between the standard desktop user who wants a lot of cores, a la the 3900X, and the people that want a Threadripper-like system. And I mean that quite intentionally. Threadripper-like. And yeah, I know that the 3900X is better price performance. And for most, honestly, content creators, it's more than enough. But I would make the same argument about the 3800 or 3700X. The 3700X, or maybe even the 2700X, is more than enough for most content creators, even those who multitask a lot. So if you say the 3950X isn't 
worth it, then neither is the 3900X for most of the people you're probably talking about. In other words, the 3950X is for the exact same people that the 2950X was for. That is who the 3950X is for. It is the 3950X replacing the 2950X. And you know what? Now it's 16 cores for $150 cheaper on a platform that starts at a lower cost. They are lowering the bar for people who want this many threads or actually more performance than what these threads would have given you before. And let, then people will say, well, Tom, what about the IO? What about the goddamn IO? Bear with me. I have a point to make here. Maybe one of the main points of this video. And that's this. So I just pulled up, you know, one high end X570 motherboard. I didn't spend that much time. I was just, you know, on Newegg. And I'm like, all right, let's just pick one that costs, you know, like 300 bucks or something. What can this support? Hmm. It can have, let's see, it has what? You can put two full graphics cards in here, and there's extra PCIe slots. And remember, this is PCIe 4.0, so over time, you'll be fine if you're using Times 8 PCIe 4.0. It's not going to affect your gaming performance really at all, if, if literally at all. And let's see what it also supports. Two M.2s and eight SATA drives. I mean, that is more than enough for almost anyone and i mean almost anyone because let's go through some random youtube videos here like this guy who says this is the computer you need for serious video editing he says you need this just a year and a half ago and it was 10 cores 32 gigs of ram and let's see two storage drives wow what an editing rig because when I look what X570 supports, it can go up to 128 gigabytes of RAM. And it actually supports ECC memory. 128 gigabytes is enough for almost everyone, including hardware unboxed, guys. I mean, I can, it's almost impossible for me to find a serious content creator or tech tuber who has need for more than, I mean, if you look at their builds, it's all 32 gigabytes of memory. And I'm not shitting on. Well, I am shitting on this guy because, I mean, what is he doing with this Skylic X? But 32 gigabytes is enough for most people. And the 3950X supports 128. And you know what? It also supports two lightning fast M.2s, multiple, and when I say multiple, I mean over six SATA drives. And then you can also put in like a capture device. This is enough. This is enough for most people. And I don't believe the majority of people that say they this won't cut it. This will cut it for the majority of people based on almost every single example I can find online of someone who's considering a 16 core. And if for some reason you're somebody who needs a lot of I.O. instead of faster I.O., like let's say for, for some reason you do need 20 drives in there and uh, – price performance is some real issue for you. Well, Zen Plus isn't going anywhere, and it's only getting cheaper. You can get the 24-core 2970WX for like $900 now last time I checked, and it renders as well as the 3950X, or almost as well. So there you go. Just get that. Get a $300 uh, X399 motherboard, and just, you know, it's there. It's staying there. But for those people who want the newest Zen architecture because they might use it for gaming as well or some other task that it just exceeds previous Zen architectures by miles, AMD is forcing you to decide now. And the consolation prize for deciding you don't need a Threadripper is the 3950X. AMD forced me to decide. I am not a poser. I am not someone who's going to throw thousands of dollars away on a Threadripper build that I won't really use. But you know what? I could actually use 32 threads. This is a picture I took a few days ago of me encoding slash rendering a podcast episode for YouTube. This can take 45 minutes or longer, depending on how long the episode is. And I'm playing a 64-player multiplayer game, Battlefield Five, with my brother Dan at the same time. And you know, I wish I could have a bunch of Chrome tabs open, too, so I could be uploading and doing research in between deaths. But I can't. I have to decide, and you know what? The Radeon 7 wasn't the bottleneck. It was at like 80% usage, and my CPU was definitely maxed out. The 3950X is for me. I want to run concurrent 
workloads. And you know, if I have to stop at 64 or 128 gigabytes of RAM, I'll live with it. I don't need 256 gigabytes. I'm not going to pretend I'll ever do Crossfire again. And if I can't get a hold of it, the 3900X will be fine for doing all this research and uploading and rendering at the same time as well. And so, yeah. The extra four cores over the 3900X and the extra eight cores over the 3700X are worth it for me. I think it's time for people to be honest that almost everyone who was buying the you know, 12 and 16 core Threadrippers was buying it because the price performance was good and not because you actually needed 256 freaking gigabytes of RAM, please. And if you do, if you're someone that actually needs 88 PCIe 4.0 lanes, then Threadripper 3000's price isn't at all an issue for you. Threadripper 3000 is like 50 to 70% better in some workloads. And so it's going to cost a little more. And for the people that need it, they will get it. So there you go. That's who all of this is for. The 3950X is for the same people or 99% of you who are already looking at the 2950X. And now it's cheaper. And Threadripper is in a class of its own for serious professionals. This is the world we live in now, and it's a pretty excited one. And I think people should be excited. I don't understand this. I just don't want to see any more people going like, oh, this costs too much, and I wish I could buy a Threadripper because Threadripper isn't the same as it used to be. HEDT means something different now. It's not just two extra cores or four extra cores. It's dozens of extra cores and more I.O. than, as far as I can tell by doing research, almost any of you need. I've been making do with the 6700K all year, and I am just getting a bit tired of having to close one recording app while opening up another um, screen capture app and going back and forth. I wish I could just have everything open on every monitor at once and switch quicker and quicker. I do think it would reduce how much time it takes for me to make these videos for you guys. So I am looking at the 3950X, but the problem is, see the 3900X just doesn't have as much of a wow factor and the 2700X just keeps getting cheaper. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. The 2700X is getting so much cheaper that at a certain point, I might just get this over both and see if the 3950X goes down in price over the next year or a Zen 3 thing comes out at the end of next year to upgrade to. I'll just get pretty much the same platform, maybe not a big liquid cooler, and throw a 2700X in there, get one fast storage device uh, for the random read-write, and then when it comes time to upgrade, I'll just have the motherboard and everything ready and just be able to go and slot in a new processor, maybe with a more beefy liquid cooler. So that's kind of actually what I'm thinking about in case you guys are curious. I'm kind of leaning more and more towards really trying to get a 3950X and targeting it or going, well, if I'm going to save money, why would I go with a 3900X? I'm just going to get this like $100, right? Almost now, 2700X at Micro Center. But that's what I'm thinking. Hope you enjoyed this video. I really wanted to get this in everyone's heads before the Threadripper reviews come out. Who are these new high thread count processors for, including the 3950X? Consider supporting me on Patreon, where you can talk with me and other hardware enthusiasts in a Discord. Get access to an exclusive podcast die shrink where me and my brother really dive into specific subjects that have to do with pc hardware and gaming new one coming out uh i think when this comes out and more rolling out over the holiday season in addition to 11 years of being a pc gamer a multi-part series with guests and loose ends is coming up soon with a special guest as well much more content to come it is completely fan supported and if you are hitchhiking on the patreons that's fine i get it just please share like and subscribe. All right, peace.